Hello and welcome TrendSpider users to this video number four in our six part educational web series from Go No Go Charts. My name is Tyler Wood. I am a CMT charter holder. And today, as always, I am joined by our chief of charts, Mr. Alex Cole. How are you doing, my friend? Ready to go. Awesome. All right. So today we're going to be talking not just about technical indicators, but also about money management practices. We're going to talk about how we can find opportunities to enter or even re-enter trends that are persistent. But just as a quick review, we've been talking about the idea of using technical indicators and that tremendous information that uh, the innovators of uh, the last and prior generations have given to us. But without obstructing our view of price action itself, not overwhelming our chart or creating this analysis paralysis that makes trade decisions so difficult. So Alex, just uh, walk us through real quick what we've discussed so far and what's included in the complete go -no go chart. Absolutely. So we've already talked about the go -no go trend, right? That's the co core concept of this suite of tools that allows you to blend together the foundational concepts of trend following to give us a way to identify trends as they happen on our chart. We also talked about momentum concepts and the value we can get from looking at those oscillators to give us a sense of the strength of price movements uh, as we look at them in the price panel. And today we're going to look at the interaction between those two concepts and some of the data visualizations that we've come up with as we look at the go no go icons that'll keep our eyes uh, uh, drawn to the main price panel and allow us to be clear in our decision making. And then in a later video, we're going to talk about volatility as well and introduce the go no go squeeze. And with those four components, we believe we have a complete technical overview of any security that we're looking at over any time frame. Absolutely. And before we get into uh, how the charts work, let's just review. What are we trying to do as money managers? Yeah, so we always say we never try to anticipate what's going to happen. We try to participate in trends that we can see on the chart. And if we can do that, we can remove the doubt. We can uh, we can survive the markets without getting ourselves confused. We can take away any uncertainty because we're remaining disciplined and sticking to our checklist and our, our process for investing. And we can act responsibly and hopefully without all of the emotional, the sort of the troubles that come along with, with emotional bias that we've talked about at length as well. We know most human beings, uh, we, we come up with our opinion on a situation and then enter the world looking for evidence that supports what we already believe. That's called confirmation bias. So to help illustrate this point, I want you to stick with me for a minute. We're going to get a little more mathematical around the expectancy formula. So with any trade, your profitability is going to be combining these two factors, the percentage of winning trades you have and the profit ratio of those trades. Now, we could spend hours and hours talking about uh, the illustrious behavioral economists who have written extensively about our cognitive psychology, about the heuristics that uh, really envelop all human understanding of the worlds around us. But if we're talking about the trading context, right, just think to yourself, how many horrific doomsday scenarios do you hear in financial news media or do you read about the uh, the untenable situation, geopolitical con uh, conflicts or the debt ceiling and what Congress is doing about it or uh, where Fed intervention is going to take place. And I just uh, I feel like there's a lot of time, a lot of ink spilled on paper predicting or narrating what we think might happen in the future. And as technical analysts, as trend following investors, Instead of predicting or having some opinion about where we think the market is headed, we want to react responsibly to what the market is giving us. So in this graphic on the right side of the page, what we're looking at are trading systems. And here's the efficient frontier. This is where we break even, that combination between percentage of winning trades and the profit re ratio therein. So let's just pick on this blue dot for a second. Imagine if your entire analytical discipline was to simply flip a coin. 50-50 chance, whether you buy a security or not. So if we're going to put something in our portfolio, instead of knowing anything about the company, all we did was flip a coin, we could still break even, provided we had a trading discipline that would allow profits to run and for us to cut our losers short. Now, we're talking about uh, David Ricardo's famous quote from the 1600s, and it's very simple to say out loud, let your profits run, cut your losers short. Very difficult to do in practice. And we know from some of the greatest trend following investors out there, think about uh, David Winton from uh, David Harding from Winton Capital, they're comfortable somewhere over here, widely diversified, 
They know that a lot of their trades are not going to work out. But with trend following, they're looking for that right tail event. They're looking for a trending security that is going to give them that 10x, 20x return, which will overlay and, and outpace all of those small losses uh, from their losing trades. And so what we hope to do with GoNoGo -Go charts is help ourselves stick with trending securities, arguably perhaps even harder than cutting losers short. It's staying with something that has already uh, accumulated a lot of profit in your account. Uh, as human beings, we know from the prospect theory that Daniel Kahneman and Amos uh, Tversky wrote for us in the 70s was that we experience a lot more pain and suffering from a loss than we experience joy from a gain. And when we look at our trading accounts, it's uh, it shows up that we lock in those uh, those profitable trades very quickly. We cut our winners short and we hold on to losing trades, hoping that they will come back around so we don't have to face uh, the horrific uh, situation of being wrong. I'm here to tell you today we should all get really comfortable with being wrong. It's going to happen all the time. And if we can use our process and our rules to help us get out when we are wrong about a security that we've selected, uh, we will we will be profitable over time. So Alex, quick review of those momentum concepts that we talked about in video number three. Yeah, so in the last video that we did, we talked about how valuable these tools are and they give us a sense of the velocity of price movements. The difficulty we have here is that we, we know these were designed, as you mentioned, in the 70s where the markets were mostly range bound. And what you end up then is not with a clear understanding of how to use these in a trending environment. But that's where some real power is. And there's been great research written on that subject. Uh, people like Connie Brown have written uh, great work about it. And what we find is that these securities or the oscillators, I should say, will tend to range um, when they're trending. So if you think about something we all know and love, like the RSI, that's, that indicator will tend to trade in a range when the when a bullish trend is in place. It'll perhaps go from 40-ish to 80-ish. It'll never go oversold. Oversold doesn't really make sense uh, for, an for an indicator when a market is trending higher. Now, it will have some periods of momentum cooling off. Of course, we know that we don't move in a straight line. So the indicator will go from overbought, showing enthusiasm, and then it will cool off back into neutral territory. And what we see over and over and over again is that this happens throughout a trend. But the problem we have is that these oscillators move very quickly and we become very subjective in how we define that trading range for the oscillators. For RSI, is it 40 exactly? Does it depend on the security? Do some securities seem to trade from 35 on the oscillator to 75 on the oscillator? What about if we come down to 42? Does that count as a touch of support? What if we trade through to 38? Is that a broke, broken support at 40? So it becomes very subjective. Now, uh, of course, some people are brilliant at using this kind of technique and these methods, but it introduces some subjectivity and allows us to be a little uncertain of what we're looking at. So let's go through an example. And I want to share with you a quick anecdote of how I learned momentum. Uh, Ralph Acampora has been a, a great mentor and a dear friend for many years. And when I first started working with the CMT Association, he explained to me the concept of momentum. He said, Tyler, picture a, a baseball in your glove, perhaps from the Bronx. Everything's baseball for these guys. So picture a baseball in your glove. And when you throw that ball up in the air, the point that it's moving fastest is right when it leaves your hand. And then it's going to float up to the apex, the highest point that you've thrown it. And what is it going to do? It's going to come back down. Now, in a game of catch, that momentum decelerates and it comes back down to your glove before going off again. So in a trending security, if we're looking at a go, no, go chart, we're going to see momentum oscillate between overbought and back down to neutral. And what's so powerful about the go, no, go oscillator is this objective zero level, the area of neutrality for all those blended momentum indicators. We have an exact point at which all of the background information is in its neutral territory. So when we look at a trending security like this, we can see momentum surge up and come back down to zero. Now, in 2021, we saw a lot of irresponsible financial market participants saying, BTFD, man, you know, securities only go up, right? Every time it pulls back, we want to add to our position. We want to get into those trends. Well, the part that makes that really irresponsible is that at any one of these pullbacks, that could be the start of a trend reversal. So we have to be objective and rules-based in how we decide that this is not the beginning of an end, right? 
picturing. We can't see the right half of the chart, but rather a point of trend continuation. We do that by looking at momentum oscillators to give us that leading or forward-looking indication of where price may be headed. So every time the oscillator comes down to test the zero line, this is our decision point. Do we prepare to get out of that position? Is it about to roll over? And if not, if momentum surges back in the upward trend, we want to stick with this security as it continues to trend higher. Remember that expectancy formula. We need those large gainers to outpace the small losses. Now, with the, with the go-no-go oscillator, every time it touches the zero line and finds support, meaning when it moves back in an upward direction, we've been able to call those out on the chart. And Alex, let's talk a little bit about those go-no-go -go icons that really draw our attention to those important moments. Absolutely. So we now know the importance of that zero line. So we want to draw our eyes to the chart when something interesting is happening around that level. So those are the first icons that we're going to talk about here. That's using the oscillator in exactly the way you just described. Remember, it was calculated in a way that when all of those inputs to the oscillators were in their neutral territory, the oscillator fell to the zero line. So when that happens and finds support, we're going to put icons on the chart that suggest trend continuation. And we can say that because momentum is surging once again in the direction of the underlying trend. So when a go trend is in place, as it is here, if the oscillator finds support at zero and moves back into positive territory, then we can say that there is resurgent momentum in the direction of the go trend. So these are go trend continuation icons. Now, the second icon that we have here on the chart are those red triangles. Now, those are counter trend corrections. And that is because we, we know there's so much value in using oscillators in their traditional sense. We want to highlight that on the chart as well. And so with any oscillator, you'll be looking for situations where a security has gone overbought and then come back into neutral. So that's that, you know, perhaps for there's a little price exhaustion. That's what you're looking for at those moments. And that tells us that in the short term, at least price may struggle to continue in the direction of the trend and it may pull back. And then what do we do? Of course, we then look to the zero line to see if we have continuation icons. So those are the two types of icons that we highlight on the chart. And we can look at this in a no-go trend as well to see how those icons. Absolutely. For a lot of the institutional portfolio managers that we work with, they are trading in and around a position. So they might trim back at areas of uh, overbought exhaustion when it starts to come back to neutral. They might size up their position or pyramid into a trade as, uh, as that momentum resurges. These are all techniques that you can use in your own account. And one of the beauties of Gonogo -Go charts is that it's not a, a, a paint by number. You can, uh, you can trade these in any way that fits your objectives and timeframes. But uh, as Alex mentioned, the concept of trend following works in both directions. And for those of you who are comfortable trading to the short side, it's important to understand you can stick with no-go trends as well. And understanding that the oscillator will do the exact same thing in a downtrend where it uh, goes to oversold conditions and comes back up to neutral, right? It's surging with enthusiastic negativity, enthusiastic bearishness, and then comes back to neutral before surging again. So this no-go trend, we're using the icons in the same way. Trend continuation are going to be these red circles on the top of our price panel. And then when we see those moments of trend counter-trend correction, where it was extremely oversold, we move back into the neutral direction. For those of you who uh, have any questions for us, by all means, shoot Alex and I an email, info at gonogocharts.com. And we'll be back with you in video five to talk about volatility compression. Until then, take care of each other and trade them well.